Welcome back to the game collection. This is part three of a five part retrospective, so if you didn't see parts one and two, be sure to check them out. I am Super Derek, and this is Breath of Fire 3. Breath of Fire is a game that won my heart years ago. Capcom improved upon the formula a year later with the release of Breath of Fire 2. Three years later, Capcom outdid themselves yet again, but was it a masterpiece? Capcom released Breath of Fire 3 for the PlayStation in 1998. In similar fashion to Breath of Fire 2, you don't have to have played any of the previous titles to understand what's going on in this game. Though, to pick up on some of the throwbacks and cameos from previous titles, it is recommended that you play through them, but not necessarily game-changing. In Breath of Fire 3, you play as a child named Ryu, the last remnant of The Brood, who were all but wiped out in a great war 500 years earlier. After a couple of thieving orphans take him in, they find themselves in a heap of trouble, this sends Ryu on a meandering journey that explores the shades of grey between right and wrong, self-actualization, and the search for God. If the narrative of Breath of Fire 2 was that of a movie, then the story of Breath of Fire 3 is a novel, an epic quest that sees our heroes travel through molten volcanoes, across wide oceans, and vast deserts. Now if that sounds a bit lofty for a video game, Rest assured that Capcom didn't take the ham-fisted approach to this. Instead, Breath of Fire 3 is a nuanced allegory. It can either be enjoyed at face value for what it presents to you, but it's also open to interpretation. The game opens with a dedication to the dragons, and that can be interpreted a couple of different ways. My first thought was that it was simply a dedication to the players of the previous games then maybe the victims of oppression. However, as the game progressed, the dedication seems to shift to people with the will to change the world around them for the better. Breath of Fire games up to this point have also featured strong side quests, providing lots of character development. However, Breath of Fire 3 put the story of the individuals on the back burner this time, and let the main story take center stage. There's still, of course, character development, but this time, the game doesn't diverge from the plot to provide it. And that's fine with me because the story of Breath of Fire 3 is the longest yet. There are also some notable improvements in Breath of Fire 3's gameplay over its predecessors. What we've got is still a traditional turn-based RPG. The maximum party members have been dropped from 4 to 3, and the available character pool has been shrunken from 8 to 6 characters. Characters with a significantly higher agility stat than your enemies will also get extra turns during battle, giving you a tactical edge. Characters can be tweaked and customized to ludicrous efficiency using the newly introduced Master System. No, not that Master System. A system of masters who you can train under, which increases and decreases the rate of certain stat improvements. Also, enemy skills can be learned by watching instead of attacking during battle. In this regard, the gameplay of Breath of Fire 3 is one of the most moldable of any of the games up to this point. You can even unlock battle formations that give you certain stat bonuses, making this game easily adaptable to suit whatever your playstyle is. Even the enemy encounter rate, which I find has struck a happy medium in this game, can be modified using equipment purchased from special vendors. There are distractions in minigames galore, which can provide you with a chance of getting some top tier equipment and items. Fishing minigames return from Breath of Fire 1 and 2, this time with the ability to trade top tier fish, like whales, for top tier gear. Other distractions are so difficult and time consuming to accomplish that it might make even Gerard the Completionist cry. For perspective, some people envy those who can get their hands on a Sword of Kings which has a 1 in 128 chance of being dropped by a Starman Super. 
Now, I'm no master at Earthbound, but even I was able to get my hands on one of these swords for the purpose of my review of Earthbound. The Starman Super isn't even all that hard to beat. Now, contrast this with the Goo King Sword. The Goo King Sword has a 1 in 256 chances of being dropped by the Goo King enemy, which is relatively difficult to find. They don't pop up very often. And they'll run from you unless you steal an item from them first. Should you choose to do this, be prepared to be stomped into the ground by an enemy with attacks that can one-hit kill your entire party. Have fun with that one. I didn't do it. Something I'm sure you've already noticed are the sizable graphical improvements over Breath of Fire 2. In Breath of Fire 1 and 2, battles took place in an isometric view, while the rest of the game took place in a normal top-down grid-based map. Following this tradition, Breath of Fire 3 embraces the isometric perspective sported by its predecessors by using it throughout the entire game, similar to Landstalker but with a movable camera, which you can use to find hidden items and solve puzzles. This is possible because the environments are low-polygon 3D models while the characters are hand-drawn sprites. Enemy encounters are random, but take place on the same screen that you navigate, sort of similar to the way Chrono Trigger's battles take place on the same screen. You may have noticed that while Breath of Fire 3 was released on the Sony PlayStation, all of the gameplay footage that's being shown is presented in widescreen. This is because Breath of Fire 3 was ported to the Sony PlayStation Portable in Europe in 2006. This port fixed a couple of bugs, added widescreen support, and some have alleged that the music also features some instruments previously missing from the PlayStation release due to an audio glitch. A fishing mode was also added for those who just wanted to skip straight to the real meat of the game. I picked up a PSP copy of the game for about $15 because the PSP is not region locked and getting a complete copy of Breath of Fire 3 for the PlayStation would cost roughly twice as much. But because I spent nearly 60 hours playing through the game in less than two weeks, in retrospect, the comfort of a controller just shouldn't be underestimated. My thumbs may never forgive me. Regardless of this, I'm going to power forward because I'll be playing through Breath of Fire 4 next time on The Game Collection. What, you want some more? Okay, well, I recommend checking out parts 1 and 2 of this retrospective if you haven't already. Click here to check them out. Otherwise, what did you think of that footage from Landstalker? If you dig the art style of Breath of Fire 3, that game might also interest you, so here's a link to that review. Also, if this is your first time seeing one of my videos and you've made it all the way to this point, it might be a good idea for you to click on this subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to my 